morning, everybody. Hi. Hello, everybody. So great to be with you again today. Um, <laughs> Thank you, dog. It's Friday, our favorite, absolute favorite day of the week. <laughs> Happy TGIF, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I am Patty Quinn, and I'm here, as always, with the talented and lovely Hillary Hillary Beeble. Beeble. Hello. <laughs> um, and we are, um, we're actually recorded today. I am um, going out of town for a charity event and can't be there live on Friday. So this is recorded, um, but we would, we're still super happy to be with you um, today. I just can't miss our Friday get together. So, and I'm down in the comments. Uh, future me is down in the comments <laughs> as this is streaming live. So if you have any questions or have any comments, please still <laughs> share them because I'm right there. <laughs> <laughs> and sorry, we've got, let me go grab our little party. <laughs> <laughs> Think dog, it's Friday, everybody. We'll set you over here on your little bed. Um, so today we are going to, she's our little supervisor, I think. <laughs> make sure we do this one right. Um, today we're going to do a DIY no sewing. Yay, no sewing. Um, grab your stitch witchery because we're not sewing today. Uh, no sew dog silhouette table runner. So we're kind of planning ahead for the holidays. Yeah. So um, this is out of fabric. Um, so the first thing you're gonna wanna grab are kind of upholstery fabrics. So I've got like a, a really neat kind of neutral plaid and then kind of a gray, uh, a little bit of a herringbone kind of uh, look. Oh yeah, and Hillary's got the same plaid. Yep, Great minds same, think alike. <laughs> same plaid and I have a, just a slightly different uh, kind of background fabric here and as Patty mentioned, upholstery fabric or something that's a little bit heftier because right. this will be your main table runner. So something that's a little bit heavier than like a super thin cotton or something like that. Right, exactly. And so then basically what you want to do is uh, go to Google, type in uh, dog silhouette or dachshund silhouette or um, basset hound silhouette or whatever kind of dog you're looking for and find a really simple shape. We're not looking for one that's really detailed, um, something that's really simple to cut out. And then basically that's what you're gonna do is use that uh, silhouette as inspiration for um, drawing that onto your fabric. Now, um, there's a bit of a challenge to get that concept on fabric, um, especially in a larger size. Um, mine is about two feet um, long. Hillary, I think yours is a, a, a bigger table runner than mine. Yeah, mine's mine's about 35 inches wide and about 19 inches tall. Okay. So when I did mine, I just blew up my silhouette to the size that I wanted it. So I blew it up to 35 inches wide and then printed it. It ended up printing in different sections. So it was about eight eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper that then I cut the pattern out and laid it on top of my fabric. So it, it kind of puts it into different chunks, little puzzle pieces that you'll have to put back together again if you're going to use like your own home printer to blow up and print. Right. And I actually used um, a projector so I could take my little picture, my silhouette, and project it on the wall to whatever size I wanted. Mine's about two feet by maybe 13, 15 inches tall. Minimum you want is about 13 inches um, tall. So um, whatever length you're doing, give yourself at least 13 to 15 inches um, in yeah. height um, for your dog. And then um, if you don't if you're not familiar with printing really large things or you don't have a projector at home, um, one of the things you could possibly do is go to a local print house. Um, there used to be Kinko's. I think our, even our grocery st our fancy grocery store has a print center where you can print mm -hmm. photos and stuff. Walmart, Sam's Club, any of those kinds of places have printer uh, places where they can print something at a larger size for you. Um, it's a few dollars uh, to get that larger kind of poster size, but it'd be great for, uh, using it as a template to put onto your fabric. Yeah. So you can cut that out and then trace that onto your fabric. And then you cut that out. And then if there are any other 
like ears or spots or collars or markings and things that you want, um, then get a coordinating fabric. And that's why we have two different kinds of fabrics. And then you can trace that. Here's my little ear. So you can trace that onto the fabric and then cut that out as well. Um, and I think that just adds a, a lot of character to, yeah. to the pup that we're going to create. A little, little extra dimension, but also kind of make it a little more playful and fun. Yeah. And these are kind of rustic. So we're leaving the edges kind of uh, cut and just right. frayed. We're not finishing those edges and we're not going to finish the edges of our spots or or yeah. our ears or things like that. And that just kind of adds to that sort of farmhouse feel about them. So right. Exactly. So you can see there's some fray marks top and bottom there. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're worried about the frays, uh, you can always use fray check or something like that to keep them in place so they don't fray anymore. But yeah, just leave that fray. It really just adds kind of that rustic feel. Gives the pup a little extra fuzzy, furry feel to it yep. as well, I think, which is nice. Um, so that's great. And then um, I think the other thing too, um, and maybe you could do this as you go, as you put each element on, or you could wait until the end. Um, you could also use like a spray starch yes. um, to get, make it a little more stiff and maybe keep those fray, frays from, uh, you know, getting any further along. Um, but really the next thing to do is cut out your, cut out all your pieces. I still have one to do. And then we're going to um, iron them on with some stitch witchery. So Hillary's ahead, of, a little bit ahead of me. She's got a few extra spots and pieces. So she's cut hers out. But I'm going to cut out my ear right now. Yeah, and I'm just starting with my ear. And so I'm placing it onto the head here. Oh, that's so cute. I love this plaid, this neutral plaid. It's really beautiful. The, the, and we ended up, both of us ended up getting our materials from Hobby Lobby, but you could probably find something similar from different fabric stores or whatever. Um, these were upholstery fabrics or those kind of big uh, reams of fabric that you'll see. So that that's sort of the section that that we were in. Right, right, exactly. It's funny, you know, this, this fabric isn't fraying as much as my other one. So I'm actually gonna make it fray just a little bit. <laughs> matches the body of my dog a little bit better. I'm just taking some strips of stitch witchery that I'm going to put underneath this ear. And I'm not trying to get, I'm not trying to get it perfectly like around the outline of the ear. Um, I'm going to start just by kind of gluing it down in sort of the center. And then if I feel like there's little pieces that need to be glued down or edges that need to be glued down some more, I can take smaller individual pieces, kind of tuck them under and then yeah. glue it that way. I'm going to just clean up some of my frayed edges, and then I'm going to do the same thing. These are so cute. We're kind of building on a theme. So over the next couple of weeks, we're really just thinking about a, a centerpiece for our Thanksgiving table. Yep. So this is going to be a fun, this is kind of like part one of a, a couple part series here. So this will be a fun piece. And and we were trying to use kind of neutral um, fabrics as well so that it can work throughout the season. So mm -hmm. we're having the Thanksgiving, but it can still, you know, these are these are nice and neutral. So you can just change your centerpiece and it'll work for Christmas. And exactly. That's, that's the idea, at least. And I love the I, I love the fact that you can um, do these in any dog shape you want. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can get more complicated with your cutouts, but I would suggest starting with something simple and easy. The more complicated you get with the cutout, the bigger you need to make the the yeah. centerpiece because it'll just be really challenging to get those little tiny details for the cuts if you have kind of a smaller um, dog in total. So just kind of keep that in mind as you're looking at your silhouettes. Um, yeah, so I'm just putting a bunch of stitch witchery down. 
in my ear. These are so cute. I love the textures. You know, just finding complementary fabrics that go well together. It's always good if you're unsure. Pick one that's more plain, solid yep. color, and pick another one that's got more of a pattern on it. Um, if you're not sure, if you're not used to mixing. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> oh, it my. really does make it come to life once you start adding on some of the details. So you'll, you can see it actually get its little like, personality coming through. I like through. the little swirl near the nose too. <laughs> the, the, the fabric you put, you laid out the fabric just beautifully. That's so cute. Now I'm going to work on the little tail end because this is sort of a representation, slight representation of Lulu. So uh, <laughs> she's got her little spots on her back and but then she also has a little white tip to her tail so oh. i'm trying i'm going to try to see if we can recreate that with my little tail piece here oh yeah that's a great idea <laughs> of course of course yeah so not only can you do any kind of dog but you can customize this to your own dog which yep. is great which is super cool all right i think my ears staying in place and then yeah, I think it's all good. And then I've got, since my little dachshund chewini mix here is uh, a girl, I cut out a little bow and I used felt this time. Um, I kind of dug through my stash of fabrics and I just felt like I wanted something that was, again, just a solid color. Um, and I really liked how this, this color complemented the plaid uh, that I had. So, you know, again, it doesn't have to be upholstery fabric for some of these, uh, for some of these elements. Well, and you can keep on adding different types of textures too. And I think that's mm -hmm. part of what I have on my um, base fabric are those little swirls and they're textured little kind of embroidered swirls. So oh, it's, yeah. it's really the texture that I liked more than, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it just adds to that sort of country. I agree. Feel. I agree. It's cute. But you could use whatever, whatever fabrics you want. And it really, once you start getting to the, once you have your spots kind of laid out, it just takes a few minutes to, you know, iron them on, use a little stitch witchery and iron them on and, yeah, the magic of stitch witchery. <laughs> Love this stuff. <laughs> I know. Especially for something like this. It works really well. Well, for years I would use this even on like hemming pants or whatever. Um, I was just afraid of the sewing machine. I didn't know how to sew. Um, definitely not the best sewer around. My mother is a master seamstress. So... Anything that needed sewing in our house went to her. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so I loved stitch witchery. I was I would use it all the time growing up. I have a funny my first sewing ever. My mom had me sign up for a class when I was in high school, I think. Um, we had to sew a t shirt in class and got it all cut out got it all sewed and when i lifted it up to look at it the entire the top of the shirt was perfectly fine but the body was, was like this oh <laughs> it was at an angle so you had to you had to like stand like like <laughs> tilted in order to wear the <laughs> shirt that i made perfectly parallel but at a diagonal line <laughs> So I don't think I'm the best. I, I didn't turn out to be the best seamstress. Better at it now, but I was not very good at it then. Uh, I grew up um, sewing and my mom sewed and she actually owned a fabric store for a few years when I was oh, younger as well. So, so we had uh, we had one of those classes where we were teaching people to make that their sweatshirts. That would have been me. <laughs> that would have been me. Oh, I still God. remember we had like Mickey Mouse and Disney uh, fleece that 
oh yeah they could pick from to kind of create their own sweatshirts and I I think my aunt still has her like this was a hundred years ago (laughs) yeah 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 I know yeah I hear you (laughs) oh that is awesome how funny is that I did not know your mom owned a fabric store yep Yep. well I think your mom and my mom would have hit it off pretty well (laughs) (laughs) They would have been best buds. Yeah, I used to, um, we had a thing called make it yourself with wool that you would make your own outfit using wool um, well, how cool. in particular. So you'd, you would, uh, oh, we got a little ginger behind you. <laughs> oh, do I? Hi, <laughs> girly. Hi. But you would make your outfit. And then you would model them and get judged, and so yeah, it was it was pretty fun. Model them, huh? Yep. That's pretty yep. cool. That's pretty cool. Oh, are you camera shy? This <laughs> is a little bit hard to see on camera, but this is the little. No, I love it. It's tail part here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's going to all fall into place. I know it will. When you get all the other spots and everything, it's going to be perfect. That's awesome. What a good idea. Yeah. Now I'm just working on my last spot. Pushing up my collar. It's pretty detailed, so just trying to get it in the right spot. This should be cute. And the stitch witchery does add a little bit of heft to those areas that you're using it to, so it kind of like, especially on the tail, if you're worried about your tail being um, really thin or something like that, if you end up layering it up with the stitch witchery, it'll give it a little bit more body to it. And also, as Patty mentioned, like, you can starch uh, the different yeah. areas, too, to help kind of give it a little bit more heft as well. All right. This is turning out really cute. So I think I'm pretty close. I can do some other little refinements, but there's here's my little... Oh, and that's adorable. <laughs> I love the way that that turned out. I love the little bow, too. <laughs> so cute. There's up close, just in case anybody wants to see um, the up close. Yeah, that turned out really cute. And I'm just ironing down my last spot. Okay. Yeah, the felt turned out really nice. I'm surprised. I wasn't sure how well it was going to turn out. I think these turned out really cute. They're going to make a great kind of table uh, centerpiece, the base for a centerpiece that we make. Next week's is going to be what goes on top. Yep. <laughs> Which will be fun. That'll be a lot so of fun. So tune in next week so you can see what's going to go on top of these. <laughs> <laughs> They're so cute. And you could add you could add all kinds of other you know if you wanted to add a button for an eye or a felt mm-hmm. for a nose or things like that just be careful not to get too 3D with it because if you're placing things on top you don't want them to be topsy turvy um, on the table and fall over but yeah you can really get creative with these which is really kind of fun and you can do one for every season so yep. um, just picking out different fabrics. 
um, or if you have different pups, do one for every pup and change out, you know, <laughs> your table. Better. And you could also do smaller ones if you just wanted the individual placement. So that's one of the things like mine, like I said, is about 35 inches wide and Patty's is quite a bit smaller than that. But you can make them whatever size is going to work for your own individual table. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, these are great. These are a lot of fun. They have their own little personality, which is cute. And I, I do love the frayed edges. It just adds a little fuzzy, fuzzy fun to, to them. Oh, how adorable. That's so cute. That is so sweet. Lulu. <laughs> That's so Our sweet. little Lulu lookalike. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. I hope you had a lot of fun today. Um, we just had a, had a ball putting these together. This is, you know, something totally new, totally different. Uh, but yeah, that's part of the our TDIF um, little get togethers is to kind of get out there and stretch our little our creativity yep. and see what we can come up with. And one of the other things that you can do if you want to just add a, another little hint of embellishment on these is um, you can use a Sharpie or something like oh, that and do yeah. the little just um, faux stitch marks. So we're not actually sewing. We already said no sew. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot all about that. We could do that now real quick. Do you want to give that a try? Yeah, we can do one at least one of the spots and see how that okay. turns out. I'm going to do that on my ear. I forgot all about that. We'll give that a try. So you're just making little hash marks that look like little stitches. Gonna give it a little bit more of that rustic, rustic feel. Well, and this is the best way to sew without sewing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just draw it on. And just the hand, even just hand drawing it, uh, you know, adds that homemade character to it as well. That element of homespun. And the only thing I would say um, when you're going to do this test in a little scrap piece of fabric, test your Sharpie and make sure it doesn't bleed too much um, for the fabric that oh, you're using. That's cute. I forgot about that. Tech. Oh, <laughs> I'm so glad we did that. Here's my little, my little Oh, ear. that's perfect. <laughs> I love it. It turned out really cute. Yeah, so that's fine. Adorable. I'll show you. I got about half of it done. But. Oh, yeah, that adds so much. It really does. I so mine are a little bit thicker just because it's a little bigger. But yeah. yeah, I love the way that yours turned out. And especially on that kind of because the gray is sort of neutral, right. you can really see those stitch marks and it turns right. out so cute. Right. Yeah, that's so adorable. Okay, well, wait, I'm so glad you remembered. I was, I forgot <laughs> all about that. I have had my Sharpie obviously ready to go, just forgot about it. Thank you so much. Uh, that's why we do this together. <laughs> <laughs> we need all the help we can get. So we're here to help each other out. Hope you get some somebody to do yours with because these are fun to do together as well. You could have a little craft party and get some fabric and, and cut out some pups and, and get your stitch witchery and iron and, and have a ball. So yeah. anyway, thank you so much everybody today um, for your time and attention. We just love each and every one of you. Really appreciate you um, following along. Um, if you are not a follower of our We Heart Hounds page, please do. Um, if you are not s signed up to our newsletter, we would love to have you sign up to our newsletter so you can hear what's all going on. Yep. We'll it's a great a way to find out whatever we've got going on. So. Yeah, we'll have a link in this post for you. And um, Hillary will definitely be watching the comments as they come in. And if I'm available, which I hope so, um, not sure just yet, I might be on the road, but um, if I'm available, I'll be checking in as well. We always read all the comments anyway. And if you do one, send us a yes. picture. We would love to see it. Please, Please send us your pictures of the, your final products. We would love to see how they turn out. So, yeah. yep. Thanks again, everybody. Have a great weekend. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See ya.